right uh, good morning everyone let's start now uh, we are going to continue uh, ifrs 9 last week lesson uh, if you can remember we uh, started financial instruments and uh, we just uh, learn about ias 39 financial instrument measurement and uh, recognition and measurements and thereafter if you can remember these things if you just uh, recall your knowledge on last week work financial instruments presentation 32 39 and 7 actually now we are discussing about ifrs 9 new one so we started with financial instruments then i explain what is financial instruments <coughs> basically we discuss about three types of financial instruments financial assets financial liabilities and equity instruments so those are very uh, general uh, classification of financial instruments now we actually we have completed financial assets today we need to discuss about others right financial liabilities and equity instruments so then uh, some financial assets and uh, the characteristics and its examples <coughs> we learn that these items are not counted as financial instruments can remember last week and uh, financial liabilities and equity instruments this is very broad classification general classification for financial instruments so then we learned about uh, debt and equity so what are the differences between debt instruments and equity instruments and how to identify debt instruments and equity instruments we discussed those last week based on the redemption point and uh, the guarantee return means the dividend these things we discussed then uh, we came into compound financial instruments actually now there is no universal accepted method to classify like this some people can say financial asset financial liabilities financial equity instruments and compound financial instruments we learned last week it means having a liability component and equity component together right so we will learn it today so we are going to actually uh, complete the lesson today probably within one and a half hours we will able to complete it uh, we will learn uh, financial liabilities and some uh, questions you can remember last week we discussed some uh, question related to financial assets without having uh, transactional cost so then uh, we this week we need to dis- discuss about transactional cost uh, story and uh, the compound financial instruments or we call them hybrid financial instruments we discuss little on derivatives we'll learn uh, again today something about derivatives then after we came into classification of financial instruments according to ias 39 the previous one actually not previous one still we are using ias 39 actually we will uh, we will apply uh, ias uh, IFRS 9 from 2018 onwards, but anyway we do it now, right? Basically, uh, there are four types of financial assets: fair value through profit and loss account, held to maturity, loans and receivables, and available for sale. You know, uh, fair value through uh, profit and loss account anyway uh, initially recognized at cost excluding transactional cost and all others uh, we learn we recognize initially at uh, fair value including transactional cost. also we le- uh, le- learn about uh, subsequent measurement in uh, subsequent measurement relating to those four if you can remember these financial assets and uh, uh, held to maturity and loans and receivables are recognized at amortized cost and uh, financial uh, assets at fair value through profit and loss account we recognize to uh, fair value at the end of each year and difference is charged to profit and loss account also uh, available for sale we remeasure at uh, fair value at the end of each year and uh, the difference we recognize as part of equity right at the time of disposal we need to ch- uh, charge it to retained earnings so profit and loss account so that's what we learn and uh, previous classification then we came into ifrs 9 right and still we are in the transition period this will be compulsory to apply from 2017 onwards accordingly we learn a few classifications related to financial assets actually based on accountant treatment in ifrs 9 they have classified it if you look very carefully in the previous classification you can compare this to very easily now previous classification in subsequent measurements we had two methods actually one is amortized cost and other one is 
fair value through profit and loss account. So there are two main classification. First part, this is one, you can see, and this is one. Look at fair value at amortized cost. Based on that, they have classified uh, in IFR as nine. Now here actually this is at amortized cost we will learn it today and partly we learned last week. This is to profit and loss account, actually this is to other comprehensive income. Therefore in IFRS 9 you can take into three classification if you need. At amortized cost, fair value through profit and loss account and fair value through other comprehensive income. Because available for sale instruments usually we recognize as part of other comprehensive income, the difference, fair value difference. Understand it is like revaluation something in this case, right. So that is a new classification then you can compare very easily the old classification and the new classification. Old classification based on financial instruments types, now new classification based on accounting type, understand. So then we learned uh, some features of uh, fair value through profit and loss account. Uh, in uh, fair value through profit and loss account initially we recognize that cost excluding transactional cost and we remeasure at the end of each year. The difference we charge to profit and loss account, that is how we call fair value through profit and loss account, it is very easy. But uh, usually this is default classification if any financial asset is held for trading, right. So remember the terms, trading usually, initial recognized at cost, excluding transactional cost, at the end of each year we remeasure to fair value, difference should be charged, should be charged to profit and loss account. Right? So those are the main four features you have to remember as theory, these questions we discussed last year. And second point, fair value through profit and other comprehensive income. In that case again uh, we usually take equity instruments, then uh, initially measure at what? Fair value including transactional cost, see we do not know how to incorporate this include uh, transactional cost, we will learn it today. And remeasure to fair value at the end of each year. Right, and the difference we have to recognize as part of other comprehensive income, like revolution reserve, we recognize as part of other comprehensive income. We have to recognize fair value difference also as part of other comprehensive income. At the time of derecognition, that other comprehensive income part should be charged to, yeah, retained earnings. Right, in revaluation also we did the same. You can remember the, the remember that model. In, in revaluation story and PPE what we did. A revaluation reserve we recognize as part of other comprehensive income. At the time of disposal, we transfer that other comprehensive income into retained earnings. Same method we apply into this thing, uh, financial instruments at uh, fair value through other comprehensive income. Recognize as part of other comprehensive income and later when you de-recognize de at the time of disposal, recognize it as part of EPT, sorry, part of retained earnings. When we came into equity sorry, uh, third classification, financial asset at amortized cost, usually debt instruments only. Look, debt instruments at amortized cost, you can, very simply you can have kind of summary, right. Equity instruments through other comprehensive income. Generally, if it is something related to trading nature, it goes to fair value through profit and loss account. Easy classification, no? If it is any general case, uh, which is uh, having for trading purpose, we classify it as fair value through profit and loss account. All financial asset equity, instru equity instruments, right. So then uh, we classify it as other comprehensive income, debt instruments we recognize under amortized cost. So it is easy to remember. In uh, amortized cost, you can remember the previous classification also, it is something like that. Uh, there are two tests to uh, see first to examine. First test we call business model test. Accordingly, what we have to do is we have to see whether they have any contractual cash flow, bonds, everything, same no bonds, debentures, loan notes, everything like that. So therefore, the, you have to see whether they have any uh, contractual cash flow. Also, cash flow characteristic set. That means uh, we have to see whether the, the cash flow comprise interest part and the capital repayment part. We take debenture at the end of the maturity we will get back the capital repayment. During the period we will get interest. So therefore test number two about the composition of cash flow. 
in amortized cost what you have to remember <coughs> initially we have to measure at uh, fair value at including including transactional cost fair value including transactional cost and uh, but we do not remeasure at the end of each year we test it for impairment using expected loss model so I think last week we discussed little about this thing no? expected loss model we do I can't remember the place where we stopped last year. Last one, yes. This question we discussed last week. This one also we discussed as I remember. The default rate story, this one we discussed. No? There is no point of discussing again. Yeah, we had to start continue from this point as I remember. That is about uh, last week summary. And now uh, classification of financial liabilities. First one, uh, fair value through profit and loss account. All financial again held for trading. So like in financial asset, same. Then uh, initial measure at uh, its fair value. But remember, transactional cost are recognized to income statement. That means excluding transactional cost. Then financial liabilities at fair value through profit and loss account. What you do uh, initially? Initially, we re recognize at fair value, excluding transactional cost. Right? So we'll see how to do it. The other financial liabilities, all other all others are recognized at amortized cost. So then, uh, fair value less issue cost. That means in the initial recognition, we don't uh, we don't recognize issue cost as an expense. We are subtracting from the uh, liability, but there is kind of confusion in this case according to our Companies Act. From Companies Act, actually, uh, from stated capital, we are not allowed to uh, deduct anything. So it's kind of question we have, but uh, it's kind of mismatch actually. Nobody is still talking about this thing. Look this example, very simple example. N Limited, there is a bank loan of rupees hundred thousand on first January twenty X one. N Limited incurred an arrangement fee of 1000. So usually what we have to recognize this arrangement fee of 1000 should be recognized as an expense. But here it what says, look, we recognize as loan only 99,000. But there is kind of mismatch when it comes to our practice, but still the standard says like this. We get uh, the pure loan on 99,000. I will do questions after discussing this thing. Equity instruments, this is very simple, no need to have big classification on this. Equity means anyway, equity you know, you can understand there is no part of classification like this. But anyway, uh, like if you believe even uh, your own shares, good example. Your own shares means not investment, investor shares, your own company shares, kind of good example for equity instruments. How do you recognize it? Do you remeasure at the end of each year? No, no. We measure at fair value at the beginning. Let's say if I issue 1000 shares at uh, 15 each, then 1000 at 15 will be my uh, the capital. I do not want to remeasure at the end of each year. Understand? So the less issue cost. But here there is a big question. Look, it says less issue cost. Let's say if I uh, issue 1000 shares at 15 each, then it will be 15,000 share capital. Then if I, if I need to uh, publish prospectus and some issue cost relating to uh, issuing shares, According to our companies act, it is not allowed to subtract. But the standard says, uh, you can subtract that uh, what is called uh, expenses, share issue expenses from the share capital. It is not allowed actually in our country. But standard says like this, this is kind of mismatch actually well, again uh, relating to uh, equity instruments. But we feel like uh, the initial expense, the share issue expenses should be recognized as an expense to profit and loss account. But standard says what it says. We can subtract, subtract it from the share capital. But companies that says, no, it is not allowed to subtract anything from state of capital. You can't deduct anything. But it's kind of mismatch, right? Look, delimited issue 10,000 ordinary shares at uh, 2.50. The issue cost is 1,000. A simple one. Then uh, 10,000 in 2.50 2 means 25,000 cash debit share capital credit. So here what we need to do profit and loss account debit cash credit. But what the standard says 
this thousand should be subtracted from stated capital, but it is not allowed in our practice. So that's why I have taken like this. Understood? So, but if you look at uh, for in example in the, in the internet, you can see it has been subtracted from stated capital, but in account it is not allowed. Right? But still the standard is applicable. Right now, uh, that's all about theories relating to this. I don't want to discuss. There are some other areas, but basically, if you can understand at least these things, it is more than enough. So, how do you classify these financial asset liabilities? Assets we recognize in three ways: amortized costs, fair value through profit and loss account, and fair value through other comprehensive income liabilities in two forms: fair value through profit. Sorry, <coughs> financial asset fair value through profit and loss account and amortized cost equity instruments only one. Equity instruments <coughs> at fair value we don't remember at the end of each year. But st standard says it is uh, including transactional cost, but we don't take transactional cost. We recognize it as an expense in equity instruments. And uh, liabilities, amortized cost and the fair value through profit and loss account. Both the cases we recognize at fair value, right? In amortized cost, it goes to the <coughs> fair value through profit and loss account. If you can remember, at amortized cost, initial recognized at fair value. Uh, less issue cost that means including uh, transactional cost in uh, fair value through profit and loss account again uh, that is called beginning uh, at fair value and at the end of each year fair value difference should be charged profit and loss account then we learn uh, three types of financial assets uh, fair value through profit and loss account other comprehensive income and amortized cost in amortized cost story you can remember we have to have two test basically debt instruments are classified and at the end of each year, we don't remeasure, but we test it for impairment using this expected loss model. Right? Then uh, that impairment difference anyway, we charge for profit and loss account. When it comes to fair value through profit and loss account, we take only which instruments? Equity instruments. Uh, then equity instruments we uh, initially recognize at fair value, and at the end of each year, we uh, including transactional cost. At the end of each year, we remeasure to fair value. That difference we charge to other comprehensive income at the time of derecognition or at time of uh, disposal that other comprehensive income should be transferred to retain earnings. When it comes to uh, fair value through profit and loss account, what it is? That is uh, default classification. Usually, if it is if any financial asset is held for trading purpose, we recognize uh, as uh, fair value through profit and loss account. At the beginning, we recognize at uh, cost excluding transactional cost. At the end of each year. We remeasure to fair value, and that fair value difference should be charged to yeah, profit and loss account. So that's all about the summary. Now the practice, right? So then uh, there are some other areas. This is basic, basic uh, concepts in uh, financial instruments according to IFRS 9 new one. Now uh, hope we have done uh, some questions, but uh, we need to look at least two three questions. Hello, this something related to financial liability. A limited rises uh, finance by issuing zero coupon bonds at par on the first day of accounting period with a nominal value of 10,000. The bond will be redeemed after two years at a premium of 1,449. The effective rate of interest is 7 percent. It's very clear 10,000. At 7%, first year interest will be how much? 700. Right? Second year interest is how much? 10,700 into 7%. Compound interest. Then 10,700 into 7 percent means again 749 no? 10, 10,700 into 0 0.07 means yes, 749. Then total interest you are going to pay is how much? 1449 at the end of the second year. Very simple work. Explain and illustrate how the loan is accounted for in, uh, for the, for, for in the financial statement. 
of L limited. It's financial liability they have. They issue a loan, they give a loan. So then how do you account for this? What is initial double entry? For this one? Cash account credit, loan account, loan account, debit is financial, sorry. Ah, sorry, sorry. Ah, yes, they issue, it's a liability, sorry, they issue, yes, right. They get cash, then cash debit and financial liability credit, initial one. At the end of the first year, you have to pay interest. Profit and loss account debit, you have to credit. You don't pay by cash, but you will pay everything at the end of the period, according to this fact. Right, then uh, financial liability account credit. 7%, 700. At the end of the first year, what is the balance available in the liability account? 10,700. To the same, you will add interest for the next year. 10,700 into 7%, 749. Then at the end of the seven, uh, second year, what is your total balance in the liability account? 11,000. 449. It will be paid by cash at the end of the second year. Very simple work. Look, it's there. Look, account also there. First year, you can see here. Cash debit liability credit. First year interest PNL debit here credit. Then second year, this is credit, right? Second year balance beginning will be 10,700. On that you will add interest. 749 again it goes to profit and loss account, right? And finally you pay cash 11,449. So that's it. Simple work. That's how you account for loan. It is paid at the end of the period. Understand? You pay everything. You get a loan and actually bond, right? Bond will be redeemed after two years with interest, right? So there is no discount or coupon rate, something like that here. The very simple exercise. Look, this a little complicated than that. End of the second year, we have to pay with premium. Hmm? We pay at the end of the second year. It's two year one. Two years bond, no. First year interest, PNL 700. Second year interest, comp on compound interest, PNL. At the end of the second year, we pay cash. Understand? This cash entry comes at the end of the second year. This sum. Understand? At the end of the second year, therefore, we have to pay interest. Look, this sum. This is little complicated, but let's see here very slowly. It has everything. Accounting for financial liabilities at amortized cost, same example like in the previous story. Previous story very simple one, nothing there. Right? B limited raises funds uh, financed by issuing 20,000 6% four year loan notes on the first year of the current accounting period. Right? The loan notes are issued at a discount look now these are the real st uh, the facts loan notes are uh, issued at discount of 10 percent understand discount of 10 percent and will be redeemed after three years at a premium of 1015 look so that is a real fact uh, the fact is 1015 the effective interest rate is 12 percent there is another issue cost of thousand then tell me what are the expenses related to this uh, this loan note issue One thing is discount. The discount means what is the value of the loan note? 20,000. Right? 20,000, but uh, you are going to take, you are going to charge only how much from the customer? 20,000 minus 10 percent means 2,000 less. Understand? Then that 2,000 is an expense. Look, I have written it here. This is one expense you have. Then second expense, there is issue cost of thousand another expense now we are going to learn how to incorporate transactional cost into this story previous questions we didn't touch transactional cost we didn't have any transactional cost 
But if you can remember when you learn theory everywhere I told including transactional cost, including transactional cost. But we didn't practice how to take including transactional cost into accounts. Then there is another one, there is a premium of 1015. It will be paid where? At the end of how many years? 3 years. Then look there are 3 expenses if you note very carefully. One expense 1000 uh, at, at this point of time, issue cost. Discount 2000 here, right? This is third year, second year, first year. 1015 expense you have to incur on this point. Ah yes, sorry, not three years, four years, made mistake. I will take three and four. After three years, no, after three years at a premium of, after three years means somewhere here, I think the fourth year, yes, it's true, right? Yes, four years ago. Then, uh, is it all about finance cost related to this uh, loan note? Any other financial cost? There is another one, what's it? Why? You have to pay what? Interest? Over the period, interest how much? Interest for what amount? Interest for 10, uh, six percent at twelve. Uh, sorry, twenty thousand at six percent. Then how much is it? Thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred for each year. Thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred. Look what amount of finance cost you have relate into this. Liability, 1200 into 4, over 4 years it is, over 4 years, got it? 1000 at the beginning, another 2000 at the beginning, 1015 at the end. Now what is the real rational, what should be now? Look, if you do account like absolute ones, in the first year your finance cost will be how much? 1000 plus 2000 plus 1200. Second year your finance cost will be 1200, third year finance cost will be 1200, fourth year finance cost will be 1200 plus 1015. Is it correct to recognize like that? That is our question. Understand? Is it correct to recognize like that? But low is equally running over how many years? four years. Therefore, what we should do, this total finance cost should be amortized over four years after considering time value of money. It is fair. Why? Otherwise, what will happen? Related to this financial liability, you will have big cost in the year one. There are three costs in year one. In year two, you do not have cost, only 1200. In year three, only 1200. Then year four again, 1200 plus 1015. There is big what is called uh, volatility related to this finance cost. It is not fair. What we should do? We should take this uh, total, it will be around 8000 something as I remember. Total cost will be 8015 as I remember. Yeah, 8815. So these are the total finance cost we had. Right? Interest paid over four years, or oh, it is over four years. This 2000 in four, first year, premium in the fourth year, issue cost in four, first year, 8815. What we should do now? Can I write off 8815 over four years equally as finance cost? Possible, no? But we can do it. We are not considering then what? Time value of money. Why? 1015 income at the fourth year. How do the other 1000, 2000, and 1000 at the beginning. 
1200 yes. Samana not fair. Understand? So then what we do? We have kind of method to do based on effective interest rate. This is partly actually finance, not accounting. Now, the effective interest rate is 12%. It is not essential to give. If you have learned in finance, you have, I think, you should be able to calculate it. How to calculate it? One divided by one plus r is about n. It's discounted factor formula. No? Yes, it's true. Now we have to go into how to take this 12%. Tell me. Now anyway, it is given in this question. If you just take now, actually, I am not going to do it. We have to do it in Excel. Just open Excel sheet and try later. Then you can take this 12%, even though it is not given. In accounting, we give it. This is finance manager's role. This is not accountant's role. Accountant, what accountant has to do? They have to do accounting only as accounting point of view. Now, actually, accounting finance running together, even though we have two programs. Right? So, because now, uh, without finance, we can't do accounting. Now, how do you find out this 12% effective rate? It is IRR. Right? If you uh, put into Excel sheet like this, what is the money you take at the beginning? How much you get? 20,000. Right? What are the cash outflows you have? At the beginning itself, you have another. How much of expense you had? Issue cost 1000 at the beginning. At this, it's zero. Huh? Zero, one, two, three, four. There are four years now. In zero, 20,000 plus 20,000 minus 1000 minus. 2000 discount minus 2000 and and 1000 i'll write in thousands Twenty minus 2 minus 1 in year 0 in year 1 what is your finance cost 1.2 minus you have to pay cash outflow, right? You just check in Excel if you need. Then year two, what is it? 1.2, your finance cost. In year three, 1.2, your finance cost. In year four, how much is it? What will be your cash flow in year four? You have to pay back 1.2 all these 1.2 plus 1000 15 plus what 20 by repayment capital repayment everything you have to repay at the end of the fourth year got it now what are the cash flows you open in excel no? you do it in excel no? yes right now beginning your cash flow should be plus Beginning minus seven, uh, sorry, plus seventeen. In year one, one thousand seventeen means seventeen thousand. One thousand two hundred minus. Year two, one thousand two hundred minus. Year three, one thousand two hundred minus. Right? Year four. Oh, gosh, checking out. One thousand two hundred plus one thousand fifteen plus twenty thousand. Twenty-two thousand two hundred fifteen. Then take it. You go into another cell. Equal IRR. Right? Highlight all cells. Equal IRR. Then formula is there. Highlight all cells there. All the figure cells. Yes. You have to take that one. Yeah. Yes. IRR equal IRR highlight all sales all sales means all cash flows 
close the bracket and enter that's it what's the rate you get It's minus. Look, it's exactly twelve percent. Got it? In no, he got it. But that is what we call IRR. We call it look effective rate of interest. Now, what is actual interest? You you are going to pay six percent, but. Not actual interest. Absolute interest appearance. What is your cost? Six percent. What What is your real cost? It's twelve percent. Why? There are some other in inherent cost related to this financial instrument. Do you rate twelve percent? No. Plus thousand seventeen. Why do you accumulate? No need to accumulate. You You get into sale. IRR. Not that sale. Where are they? You type it again. IRR highlight all sales, these sales, the cash flow sales. Yeah, the so bracket enter. Look, it's twelve percent exactly. That's what we call IRR. Even you are going to get a bank loan. This is the way of evaluating. Mostly people do not know how to evaluate it. Let's say a very simple example. If you are going to uh, get a loan. Or lease facility? Did we discuss lease here? And last semester I didn't discuss. No, I I need to discuss it. Very simple example. Now, if you are going to buy an asset, or let's say your car, under finance lease, two different leasing companies will give you two different options. But they say now, let's say now this leasing company they will say if I am going to buy a car under lease terms, you will say for one lakh two thousand, right? For first two years. Then after that, I have to pay capital repayment, one hundred thousand. Then from the third year onwards, it will be thousand nine hundred for one lakh. Then there is documentation charges, there is stamp duty something, processing charges, something is there. All are cost no. Anyway, in my hand. Then finally, you say the rate is fourteen point five percent. That's how you say. Then there is another leasing company. What they say, they will say for the first one lakh within first two years, it is thousand nine hundred, right? From uh, third year to fifth year, it is thousand nine hundred fifty. There is no capital infusion in the year, in the middle. Documentation charges seven thousand. Then you said fifteen thousand. Then rate is fourteen percent. Which one should be selected? How can you evaluate? Is it less one? Fourteen percent. Fourteen percent is their cost. Then I have some other cost. What are those? I need to care about time value of money in my hand, and also I need to care about documentation charges. Then in the middle, I have to pay some capital repayment. Then only they will deduct the what is called uh, the instalment. Everything should be considered. So then, what is the method again? This is a method of calculating effective interest rate, right? So then, uh, this should be the interest rate I should use to amortize my finance cost over the period, not six percent. Understand? So total cost, total my this liability cost is. Eight thousand eight hundred fifteen. It means even you take twenty thousand, eight thousand eight hundred fifteen over twenty thousand. It is not twelve percent, no, something else. But if you take IRR like this, it means your NPV will become zero if you run at this twelve percent rate. It means if you take this twelve percent rate to amortize your total cost over the period, finally it will be zero. So that's the meaning of this. In leasing, I will show you how to do it in Excel. Same thing again. To evaluate different different lease options, same thing in let's say if you are going to buy uh, get a bank loan, they say documentation fees this much, lawyers fees, different different processing charges. You have to open another bank account. You have to deposit five hundred thousand at the end of each month, not five hundred thousand, five rupees five hundred to the separate savings account. You know, it's a very good thing. There are different different conditions. In your hand, from the customer point of view, all are cost to you, but in different different point of time. Not at the beginning, sometime. I think, hey, give one nickel, get one dollar. In for leasing, also same thing. After two years' time, they say you pay one lakh at once. Especially like for seasonal products. Abhi toh main koi agricultural products wale hum lease the nahi hone. Ek log mana dikhe ani. When you start your 
uh, harvesting you have to pay big amount එහෙම නේ කියන්නේ අර ගොයම් කපන කාලෙට කියනවා ලොකු ගානක් ගෙවන්න ඊට පස්සේ ලීස් ඉන්ස්ටෝල්මන්ට් එකයි අඩු වෙනවා එතකොට කාටවත් පුළුවන් ඩෙවලුවේට් කරගන්න හරිම ගානේ තුවට if you don't know time value of money and the techniques you can't devalue what what is the best option දැන් සමහර විට මම හිතමු මම ගන්න එනවා නම් අපි හිතමු ට්‍රැක්ටර් එකක් ex leasing company වල they say right අද අරන් යන්න සත පහක් වත් එපා දැන් නම් එහෙම බෑ now there are slabs no 25% for not motor cars na three wheelers and motor bikes එහෙම තියෙන විචාරයි යන්න පුළුවන් five maximum finance and we will discuss later so different different options are there options should be evaluated based on this ඇත්තටම මගේ finance cost rate එක කීයද මේකේ 12% ඒ වුණාට pain එක කීයද only 6% price because some other different different types of cost discount එකක් දුන්න premium එකක් දුන්න so there is issue cost you have to consider everything in accounts point of view right now hope you can understand this thing now 12% already identified just see how to fill this we will do because we don't have enough time there is another part to do today don't see everything first right just see one by one what is my loan balance at the beginning anyway how much i get at the beginning if you can remember 17000 can you remember why do you get 17000 I got a loan note for twenty thousand, but at the same time I spent shoe cost of thousand, and there I gave a discount of uh, how much? Two thousand, two ten percent. Actually, now let's say if I am going to issue the loan note to you, you give me only eighteen thousand now because I give a discount of twenty ten percent. Then I collect only eighteen thousand now. From that eighteen also, I have to pay what? Issue cost of thousand. Then net of that is how much? Seventeen thousand I got in hand. Got it? So that's what we call the loan. That's why we learned previously financial liabilities at amortized cost should be recognized initially at fair value less issue cost. That's the point. Understand? Look, that's how we account. Now, very simply, if you are going to give a loan to customer, not you are going to give a loan. If you are going to get a loan. what should be your loan impact or the net loan after subtracting expenses if you incur any expense it should not be recognized as an expense it is wrong that's the point here understand if you are going to get a loan if you are going to get a loan if you have any issue cost it should not be subtracted from expense or the pnl understand as expense it is wrong that's the point mostly what we do even not hand value apuna da karan if you get a loan if there is any expense we have to charge it you charge it to profit and loss account api ganna yana loan ekka tiyena expense api thamu documentation charge ekak gewuran api we recognize it as an expense but according to financial instrument it is wrong that value should be that expense should be amortized over the loan period that is the meaning here understand so therefore you have to be careful with this all right then we start with 17000 what is finance charge at 12% we need to calculate at now 12% why what's the reason I told you very basic principle. If you discount something, actually IRR will incur a discount. Can I get that? Can you pay? Not to not. If you discount something every time, you need to compound it. I'm going to do it. No, keep it. Calm. Right? So now we are compounding. What is finance charge? It's twelve percent. Then twelve percent means two thousand forty. Seventeen thousand is twelve percent. Look only the first year. But how much you pay at the end of each year? How much you need to pay? Thousand. 200 the interest given to pay how much right for the loan note so then you have to pay interest of how much 1200 then difference of that is how much 840 it should be added to loan account look i start loan account look first from this point onwards first entry look here this one cash debit you draw accounts you draw it like that don't draw everything together you take one by one otherwise you can't understand this first point you open loan account cash debit loan account credit it's your liability 
Understand? 17,000, you can understand how to get 17,000. Actually, even though you get 20,000 loan note, what is your initial liability? You have to only, you have to show only how much? 17,000. Cash debit, 17,000. Your loan account credit, 17,000. That is first point. Second one, if you look, double entry is there, right? This double entry, right? You pay cash how much? As interest, 1000. What should be your total finance cost? 2040. Why? We know now the total cost should be at 12%. 2040 profit and loss account debit. But you pay cash how much? 1000. You pay only 1200. Others hidden one, hidden cost to you. It should be added to the loan balance. So then look here loan account credit 840 and cash account credit. Cash I have not updated there. Cash account credit 1200. Understood this thing? At the end of each year, you have to pay interest, loan interest, loan note interest. Then look the double entry here. Sorry. 840 here credit and profit and loss account debit. It should be charged to, anyway, automatically it goes to profit and loss account, right? Then double entry. This 840 not alone. What is the total finance cost to profit and loss account? 2040. PNL debit, it came from PNL. Inside that 2040, this 840 also there. Then 2040 debit to PNL, credit cash 1200, credit to liability how much? 840. What the first double entry? Understand? Then at the end of the year 2, what is your outstanding balance? 17,840, this is at the end of the second year. Understand? 17,840. Then uh, what happens at the end of the, uh, again for the second year? 17,840. Then second year, what is your finance cost? Compounding, compounding. 17,840 into how much? 12%, right? 17,840 17, into 12%, it will be 1140.8, we will take it as 1141. Got it? Every time you have to add interest on outstanding balance. Right? Then uh, 17841 in, into, sorry, 17840 into 12% means 2141. Uh, then what is double entry? You can now tell the double entry. Profit and loss account debit, 2,141. 1,200 we have to credit. You have to pay at the end of each year cash. How much? 1,200. Balance 941. Balance 941. Look here. 941 we credit to loan account or liability account. Got it? Look the double end for the year 2. Profit and loss account debit, 2,141. Uh, 2, Cash account credit, 1,200. And liability account credit or loan account credit, 941. Then at the end of the period, you can see, oh, if you need, you can write this double entry like this. If you need, you can update your double entry like this. I will show you. If you open your loan account, Beginning 17,000 for the first year, you can write it like this if you need. Cash credit 1,200, here debit 1,200. This is also credit, correct. If you can't understand, to write one entry. Cash credit, loan account debit 1,200. Profit and loss account debit, here credit 2,040. Net of these two, how much? 840. That's what we have taken here. Look, 840. So that's what I did. We need you can write by one entry or you can write by two entries. So I took it in one entry. Then third also you do the same. Then you can see uh, at the end of the second year balance is 18,781. That 18,781 into 12%, it will be 2,254. Then double entry, profit and loss account will be 2,254. 
cash credit 1200 and we have to credit balance it's around uh, 1000 something eh? you think? 1054 1054 credit to liability account come to the fourth year then at the end of the third year outstanding balance is screen not appear Hmm. I think it's appearing uh, problem with I think your machine appearing no you have one? yes it's there the screen is there just check your system now uh, at the end of the third year, balance is 18,781 on that. You look now, different presentation. This is horizontal presentation, this is vertical presentation, same thing we do. Right? You can compare these two easily. This is horizontal cal cal calculation and this is vertical calculation. Make it make a balance as the 18,781 into 12%, 2,254. That minus cash flow again, PNL debit 2,254. Cash credit 1200, the difference should be charged to profit and uh, loan account. And in fourth year, 19,835 into 12%, it's 2,380. Then what will happen? You will pay back cash how much? This should be 21 now, not 20. Why? 20,000 plus 1,000, 15 plus 1,200, what is 1,200? Interest. This is interest for the fourth year. Inside this actually we have <coughs> uh, 20,000 plus 1,015 premium. Understand? So now uh, 21, then 19,835 plus 2,380 is finance cost. And after that, you will pay, look, final balance of at the end of the fourth year, you will pay 21,015. Then the account will be closed. Got it? But here, what you can say now, actually, uh, 2,380 minus. What is double edit for the last year? Double edit for the last year? Yes. PNL debit 2380. What else? There are two double entries for the last year, remember? Two double entries for the last year. 2380 PNL debit. Here credit, uh, sorry, uh, here credit 1180 and cash credit 1200. That 1200 already we have paid. In addition to that, we have to pay 21,000, now 1200 already done, 21,015, 21,015 cash credit, we have to debit, loan account debit. Then account will be loan account debit to look 21,015. It will be closed. There are two entries. Got it? They are. In fourth year, look, there are two double entries. First double entry 2380 profit and loss account debit. It's there, correct, huh? 21,015. 20,015 here. In uh, fourth year, profit and loss account debit 2380, cash credit 1200, and loan account credit 1180. Then finally, loan everything you have to repay 2015, cash credit, loan account debit, then your loan account will be closed. Now, what we did finally? 
what are the amounts you charge to profit and loss account at the end of each year look what is total 8815 total of those four amounts should be 8815 look what we did then api ara samanya vidhira karanna mokada enne first year my interest cost or the finance cost will be 3000 plus 1200 interest second year my finance cost will be 1200 third year finance cost 1200 fourth year finance cost 1200 plus 1015 2250 it would there is big variation then mukada kare balan smoothly we amortize over how many years four years using effective interest rate that's what we did finally total of all these will be 8015 look 8815 not said those 8815 so that is the point thing eka thamai amaru wedi but uh, it is it has kind of good rationale now uh, this finance cost we amortize over four years otherwise how do we amortize in different different rates different different amounts understand so this should be the way of accounting for financial liabilities i don't know whether people do like this right right any clarification related to this There's another question like the answer also there you can we learn it later no right we'll do this previous one financial liability set amortized cost this is financial liability set fair value through profit and loss account well going to connect this is easy than the previous one still like they know the previous one on uh, 1st january uh, 20x1 is issued 3 years 5% 30000 loan note at a nominal value when the effective rate of interest is also 5% the loan notes will be redeemed at a par at par the liability is classified at fair value through profit and loss account it means it's coming under fair value through profit and loss account at the end of the first year uh, first account in period the market interest rate have risen uh, risen to 6% what is theory financial liabilities at fair value through profit and loss account should be recognized initially at fair value remeasure to fair value at the end of each year difference should be charged to profit and loss account. so that's a theory very simple small point we have but when we work out on that the workings are very big so that's the nature of this financial instruments only small point now how to work, work on this end of now beginning what is your financial liability you get cash 30000 no discount nothing right this is easy then uh, remember you should know how to calculate effective interest, effective interest rate right? if it is on because here effective interest rate also 5% why there is no any cost no interest uh, no issue cost no discount no premium nothing understand so then uh, cash debit loan liability credit 30000 at the beginning at the end of the first year what you need to do remeasure it to fair value now tell me what is fair value of this liability at the end of year 1 you draw a line now with this is how many years long uh 3 years third one Second, first. This is zero. 
Now assume we are here at the end of year one. What is fair value of this financial liability? What is the liability of this? Thousand? How do you calculate it? Thirty thousand? You get thirty here, right? First year interest how much? Already paid. Second year thousand five hundred. Third year thousand five hundred. Third year in how much you have to repay? Thirty thousand. How to take the fair value on this date? Take present value of these expected cash flows at the rate of which percent? Not five percent. Now you need to take six percent. Why? When you go to fair, you take the market rate. Understand? Even though you issued at five percent, now market rate has been uh, has been increased. So therefore, there is a kind of benefit to you. Now we are going to account for that. It's six percent. Now, how much? You can see it there. Look the way I have calculated it. It's there. Look, the same picture I have drawn. At the end of this year, now we are st standing on this date. Remember, at the end of the year one. So then I have taken present value of these cash flows. Then here thirty thousand plus thousand five hundred, thirty one thousand five hundred. Discount rate should be six percent. Then one divided by one point zero six. Then first year discount in factor point nine four three. Look point nine four three here. Then second year discount in factor point eight eight nine. It, I took it as point eight nine zero. Understand? Take the present value of that too. Then value will be look the same thing I have taken here. Twenty nine thousand four hundred fifty. Look, I have remeasured this loan. Look, I have remeasured this loan to fair value. Then there is a difference here. How much? Ah, this is wrong, ah. Huh? This account. You have issued loan notes the other way around. So that's best to write. I'll draw it here. Liability should be in the credit side now. Thirty thousand here credit. Got it? At the end of the first year. New value will be twenty-nine thousand four hundred fifty. Then there is a difference here. How much is it? A double entry is correct. The way I have written is correct here. Loan account debit difference. Five fifty. Five hundred fifty. Loan account debit. Profit and loss account credit as other income. Look, why do you consider it as other income? You, know, you got a loan at a five percent, but now market rate has been increased. Therefore, you have kind of opportunity cost. Look, even in accounting, we take opportunity cost also. Then this is kind of benefit. Opportunity cost has been decreased, so therefore it's kind of benefit too. So that's a, that's why we said the uh, difference or the We remeasure to fair value. Somebody is writing on my slides. Who is there? Don't take over the presentation. Hmm? 
it should be displayed here. Is it due, no? No, no, he is taking over this percentage. Right. Last part. We are going to uh, learn hybrid financial instruments. Now, uh, if you can remember the flow of uh, the IFRS 9 and 39 together, it will be learned. We discussed about uh, financial assets, theories and the classifications and we did some questions. Then we came into financial liabilities and equity instruments today. And we learn two types of equity instruments, sorry, uh, financial liabilities and equity instruments. And we did two questions for two types of financial liabilities. Now the third classification, you can remember at the very beginning, last week I told you, financial asset, financial liabilities, equity instruments and compound financial instruments. So we call it hybrid financial instruments. It means hybrid means you have two components. What is it? Debt and equity in one financial instruments. One part debt, one part equity. Very simple example, like, let us say, if I am going to issue a debenture, 5 years debenture, at the end of the 5th year, the recipients have right to convert those debentures into equity shares. Understand? So, like, now in my hand, it is part of liability plus equity maybe. Why? Let us say, if you are the debenture holders, if I issue 5 year debenture to you, I will pay interest as usual at the end of each year. You have an option to convert your debentures into equity shares at the end of fifth year. Then from my side actually, in your side it is financial asset. You bought it from me. So therefore in your hand it is financial asset. From my hand, I am not sure whether it is financial liability or equity instrument. Why? Sometime you owe or part of you will convert your debentures into equity at the end of the fifth year. So therefore, at the very beginning even, I do not know whether it is liability or equity, but I am sure it has part of liability and part of equity. Those kind of things in my hand we call compound financial instruments, partly liability, partly equity. We are not sure which part will be liability, which part will become equity, but we are going to account for this thing in simple way. Look, that is what we call here. Uh, should the financial liability not... Uh, an equity instrument if it contains an obligation to re repay. But look, ah, this example. This is right. I told you the example. What is it? Look. Compound or convertible bond, convertible debentures. From issuer side, it is kind of compound financial instruments because the holders will have kind of option to convert those into equity. Understand? So now what we need to do? What it standard says? If there is any compound financial instrument, we have to recognize the liability component and equity component at the beginning of the liability. Let us say if I am going to issue a convertible debentures today, today I need to predict or I need to estimate what will be my liability part, what will be my equity part, there is a method. Understand? So what it says, on initial recognition, the liability and equity element should be split so that they can be accounted separately. Why? My equity will not be equal to liability, no anyway. So therefore, if there is any equity part, it should be accounted separately. If there is any liability, it should be accounted separately. So now we are going to detach these two into equity and liability. Look, the way that we do. This is very easy. Work. What we have to do? First, determine the carrying value of the liability component. Balance allocate to equity. Simple work. No? Then, first what we have to find out? Liability from the total fair value subtract liability, balance will be equity. Now, the question how to do it? 
look how to uh, identify liability component by measuring the fair value of a similar liability that does not have an associated equity component let's say good, good, good example like this let's assume I am going to issue two types of bonds or debentures in different conditions. Let's say for this party, I am going to issue a debenture at 5%, but you don't have an option to convert your debentures into equity shares at the end of the period. You don't have that right. Therefore, I give you 5%. I am going to issue another set of debentures to this party, but I say, oh, you can have debentures, but you have right to convert your debentures into equity shares at the end of the year, end of the at the time of maturity. What will be the percentage? I already promised to this party 5%. What will be your rate? 5% no less than that. What I told you, I will give you 5%. But you do not have right to convert your debentures into equity shares at the end of the period. But to this party, what I say, you do you have right to convert your debenture into equity shares at the end of the period. What will be your percentage that I promised? less than 5% like to him or higher than 5%? Less than 5%, why? You have a chance to get dividends after the redemption period also. That means you have right to become owners of the company at the end of the period. Therefore, sure, I will give you at least 3.5% to compensate the benefit you enjoy after the redemption. Therefore, very easy now. This side 5%, no option. This side 3.5%, but you have an option. Then what is the cost of option? In my hand, 1.5%. Then easily you can find out split liability component and equity component. Now, why, what is liability component in your hand? Then I take your debenture and discount at which percentage? This percent, 5%. Why? If the component is not there, I pay how much? 5% to this part. Got it? Therefore, I should discount. Is the fair value will be present value around cash all. So then I discount it at 5%, then I will get a value. That value minus your debenture value will be the equity part. So that's what we do here. Right? We will see. Look this question, then you can understand it. G limited issues 3%, 200,000, 20 year convertible bond at par. It means 2 years bond. The effective interest rate of the instrument is 8%. The terms of convertible bond is that the holder of the bond on the redemption date has the option to convert the bond into equity shares, the rate of 10 shares with nominal value of 1 rupees per share of 100 debt rather than being paid in cash. Very simply, you do not want to worry about how to convert it now. Some conversion part of the we are going to split into two as debt and equity. Anyway, now the thing is, you have an option to convert your debt into equity at the end of the second year. Right. G will account for the final liability of using amortized cost. Yes, it's definitely this kind of liability should be recognized at amortized cost. No transactional cost. Ignore transactional cost. Now, what is now very clear? You have debt and equity option. You have to split into two as debt part and the equity part. How do you, at the beginning, at the beginning, then what are the cash flows you have? What are the cash flows you have identified? Discount it at which percentage? Key end. 8%, where is it? Look. I prefer to draw it like this, not vertical form. You draw a timeline and discount, it is easy to understand. Present value gun head, that method, it is easy. Now, look the time frame I have taken. Beginning I take 200, look, beginning I take 200, it is low note value, at par no, no discount, nothing. At the end of each year, we pay interest. 200,000 at 3%. 3% means? Kiyada. 600. 
Have six thousand, six thousand, six thousand, yeah, six. Have six. Then first six we discount at the rate of discount in factor here. Then one divided by one plus r is the power one. One can uh, one one divided. Now this discount in factor will be one. Right. First year discount in factor 1 divided by 1 plus r means 1.08 e to the power 1. First year discount in factor. So it will be 0 0.925 or 0 0.926 you can take. Right. So then uh, that into 6 your value will be 5.5. 5. Look here 5.5. 5,500. 5. Then second year, how much it will be? Not 6, it will be at the end of the second year you have to repay. We are going to find liability component first now. If it is liability component, no equity, you have to repay or pay it back. Not 6 or 200, it will be 206. If you need, you can take 206 into second year discount in factor, it is 0.857. Then your value will be sum of these two. I have discounted these two cash flows separately. 6 separately, 200 separately, or you can take 206 at once. Then the fair value of this liability will be how much? Oh, 182.16, or 176,611 plus 5,500. Yeah, 182,100 something it will be. Body minus a decimal impact in right? Anyway, it should be around 182,000 something. What is the face value of the bone? This is a percent value of all. Some of that. Face value of the bond is 200,000. The 200,000 have discount discounted 8 percent value in 182 Ghana. What is balance? Balance 17,000 should be allocated for equity. That is how we split the debt and equity in compound financial instruments. Understood? Right, let us see another question. SA issues 1000 bonds on 1st January 20x1 at par. The bond is redeemed in 3 years time at its par value of 2000 per bond. The bond pay interest annually in areas at interest rate uh, of 6 percent, each bond can be converted at the maturity date into 125 rupees 1 shares. The prevailing market interest rate for 3 year bond that have no right of conversion is how much? 9 percent. Look, if the uh, conversion option is not there, people will get 9 percent. 
if the con conversion option is there they will get only 6% it means they are com uh, the compensate in 3% premium for what for the option understand so now uh, split into two in this case 3 year bond this was under the fast pass provision slice is not appearing not appearing Hmm? How can you rectify that? Just see whether it is present in now. This one came. To the screen. Okay, now then let's go. I'll take the other previous one. Now, correct, no? Right. Calculate it quickly. What do you need to do? This is three years. Thousand convertible bonds at two thousand value, face value. Then thousand into two thousand, na million selling you had rather than rather than you make a million selling lazy. Thousand into two thousand. Then it's two million, or you can say it's two thousand again in thousands, right? So the two million, two million or the interest given kiye ka na. It's at six percent, hundred twenty. I mean, one hundred twenty thousand interest. Then your cash loss will be. You can imagine one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty first for first two years. Abi timeline ka kanda demma one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty for the first two years. Third year one hundred twenty plus one hundred twenty plus how much? Two thousand. Right, 120 plus 2,000. Then take the cash, uh, discounted cash flow. Is there a look? Maybe first year, second year, third year. First year 120, second year, first year 120. First year 120, second year 120, third year. 120 plus 2000. Then take the present value of all these at the discount rate of. Kya the gaane the gaane? Nine percent. You get the value. Present value gone. You can go for three decimal fact, decimals, four discount in fact, or two decimals. How much? Thousand, thousand eight hundred forty-seven around yes, one one million eight hundred forty-seven thousand something will be, right? You will not get exact value because of this decimal thing impact. Remember in the exam, if uh, the discounting factors are given, use those discounting factors. Huh? Then you can have uniformity of answers. Otherwise, people will take the different different level of decimals. Samarai decimals, dekat dal hadai, samarai tunat dal hadai, or utre bina sana pon. Right then, one hundred eighty-seven thousand. One million eight hundred forty-seven thousand. 
it is your total depth part. What is the face value of the bone? Uh, 2000 into 1000, 1000 bones. So, 2 million. If you 2 million, you can do 2 million minus, minus 1,847. Then difference will be, what is it? Equity part. So, you can do it. To split debt and equity in uh, compound financial instruments. Still, we didn't talk about accounting part. Now, what is double entry? Look. The way that we account for this. We collect cash how much anyway? There is no, uh, what is called, uh, there is no, uh, what is called, there is no discount, no issue cost, nothing. So then, cash debit, 2 million. Where do credit? Equity credit, 100, here then, 152 there. 1847 minus 2000, 153, 153 or 154 maybe, right? Here 152, 153, why Equity credit, balance credit to liability account, financial liability credit, you can see the double entry here. Cash to be 2 million. Equity credit 152 or 153, it depends on your figures. And liability credit 1,847,000. Right? It is not then. Now we are going to complete the answer. Now, how to account for the liability part? Then for the at the beginning, it is done at the beginning. Now, we can the financial liability ka equity ka venkar At the beginning of the period, when we issue the bond, at the end of the year, what we have to do? Financial liability will put the It is classified as part B. You know, question again. Look part B. Show the presentation of the compound interest at the end of the period 31st December X1. Follow me now. The agadi. The is the logi ma karagani anna. Koma the karan. Cash flow ka kevano. Interest component ka hadagan no nila. What is liability at the beginning? It's 108, 1,847,000. To that you have to charge what? Interest. You consider all these, right? And uh, find uh, the effective interest rate. The mega effective interest rate is not a discount, it is not a issue cost, it is not a premium, it is not a premium. It is not a premium. We have to find out IRR, it will be the effective interest rate. It is not a interest rate. In this, in this question, coupon rate of 6% will be the effective interest rate. Why? I have any. There is no issue cost. Mukut cost a kakne. When a winner cost a kakne in addition to this interest. Understand? A is a interest again the my discount ka lagatti. Therefore, it won't be a problem. Got it? Then what is interest for the first year? Maybe 166. Relation, make a little bit of hurry. First point, make a first year. Make out Tundam Hadati in a gun. I think a little name with Hadati in a gun. Tundam. First year, liability 108, 1,847,000. It came from cash. Harni. Interest 1847 into 6%. It's around 100. Sorry, made a mistake.
what is our effective interest rate not mata adutuna isala not 6% meki idanne market rate gana gannone we remesh at the end of the year at market rate ab isala thema ekak the market rate gana matakana right 9% ekenne gatte 9% meki den ethoda without having the component the 9% 1847 into 9% it will be how much 166000 then double entry make one double entry dekki liyala thiyenne isala ekenne liyuma matakana If you write in by one, how do you write it? Here credit, profit and loss account debit. Here debit, cash credit. So then, if you need, you can take the difference of these two. 166 minus 120. If you need, you can write by one entry. How do you write by one entry? Cash credit 120. Loss 46. Profit and loss account debit 166. I have been nine percent willing compound current day tour. Just tell me. What's the reason to compound at nine percent? Discount kare kiye na? Discount kare nine percent willing? Mother, na tam liability ka meet pe nena agat yana kote. Yesa we have to compound at the same rate. Then uh, we pay cash one twenty. At the end of the year one, your liability will be one eight nine three. To 1893, you have to add 9% for the year two. This is year two. Look, this is year two. Interest will be 170, cash pay 120. So, what other man double entry? Can you understand? Can you understand? If you write two double entries, cash credit last debit 120. Interest or oh, profit and loss account debit. Liability credit 170. This will be another pull one. Or no, I can't leave another pull one. I can't leave another one. Liability credit 50. Liability credit 50. This is the one that is 170. Me 170. 120. That's the benefit. Right? Liability credit 50. P&L debit 170. And uh, cash credit 120. That's it. Then look the third year. We are moving to the third year now. This is third year. Brought forward balance one nine four three to the same. We add interest. Then what happens? Do I have to do something for him? Yes. If they don't convert this into equity shares, look at the current. We will repay by cash. So two million here. Have given two million. We will repay two million. If they convert into equity, here a bit. I thought. Now, based on that, you don't pay cash, no. Equity will convert, karo. Anyway, we debit to liability. Here, yeah, debit. We have to close it, no. If you pay cash credit, otherwise we put into equity. Okay. Then this balance also should be transferred to equity at that point of time. Understand? So, the equity value we get, no, I get the end over. Capital value we get. Transfer, karo. So, make it a money can cash kill that idea. We'll do next question. It's, it has the full one with issue cost. Little complicated, but you can see. We are going to look uh, hybrid financial instruments with issue cost. This is the same issue cost. A limited issued 1 million convertible bonds on 1st June 2006. The bond had a term of three years and were issued at a total fair value of 100 million, which is also par value. Are there three years? What did you say? 
interest paid annually in arrears at 6% per, per annum but uh, if that conversion option is not there the rate will be how much 9% the second point third point look the company incurred issue cost of 1 million if the investor did not convert to shares they have been redeemed at par arne thoda egolo convert kari nattam at par they will it will be paid back as a maturity all the bonds are converted into 25 million ordinary shares ah what happened at the maturity what has happened everybody converted all these shares into equity shares no bonds could be converted before that date it kalin convert karanna ba maturity ne kam innone the directors are uns uh, unsure how the bond should uh, have been accounted for up to the end of the conversion on 31st may 20x9 and have been told that the impact of issue cost is uh, look it's very good thing impact of issue cost is to increase the effective rate of interest to 9.38% anivare wedi wenne pa isalat matak 6% double wala 12% una because of issue cost thori ne excel wala dala i calculate kala balanna wenawa they have calculated it that it will be not that much it will be 9.38% wedi wenawa ali thora poddak hari wedi wenna one podi decimal lak hari right now you work how to do it first what you have to do split into two debt part and the equity part with issue cost palam vela nai natta only 3 years no easy work chart is there so split in debt and equity right so look uh, i'll explain this thing a little fast because we don't have that much of time today usually we should uh, complete this financial instruments within one day oh maximum of one and a half days right last week actually i did uh, only two and a half hours mahita podi ganak kare i stopped little early no so that's the reason no need to have break no we'll continue today right break api etta ngiye sathi dunna agadi ore na ha you need to have break five minutes okay then after this question well, then we can continue no i have another lecture at 11 o'clock 11 to 1 right so again i have another one in the evening for you today financial statement analysis right uh what was talking about right now split in the debt and equity part just see this one. you can answer is there no now uh, if you take the timeline this is easy without going with the vertical method horizontal method easy so then first year look here first year second year third year and third year in at the end of each year you have to pay uh, 6 million how to take 6 million what is their interest rate 6% 1 1 million into 6% means 100 million into 6% means 6 million correct no 6 million at the end of each year may 666 6 and also at the end part how much 100 what is your discount rate you have to use here not 9.038 uh, 9.38 you have take 9% without having the option metana ganne eka understand so then 9% will in discount karanna then it will be around 92.3 any present value eka are the future expected cash flows are discounted at 9% very simply so then it will be 92.3% then face value of this is 100 100 minus 92.3 or 92.4 it will be difference is in the balance what is it equity na api tunak karanne meke tungeni eka so you should be able to understand now so now what is the initial double entry what is the initial double entry cash debit cash debit how much Hundred thousand. Oh, you can say one one hundred million. One hundred million cash debit. Liability credit. Nine two point three. Seven point seven. Ne. Seven point seven or seven point six. Whatever the amount should be credited to equity. That is initial. 
done already. Look. But the question now, what's the question? If you do so, we will have a problem. There was an issue cost of how much? 1000. That issue cost, is it for equity or is it for liability? Then Prashna can one. Issue cost should be splitted proportionately. I they get money. Not only for liability or equity, they get money. Issue cost together. Then that issue cost also should be uh, apportioned proportionately. Look the way that I have taken based on debt and equity. So the ratio is going to pull up for 1 million out of 100 million, 92 million for debt out of 100 million. 7.5 or 7.6 or whatever the amount here for equity, sorry, equity, understand? So that's how we took the proportionate value for issue uh, of issue cost. 924 for liability, 76 for equity. So then double entry will be look for the issue cost. Is still a double entry hurry. For the issue cost, what we have to do? Is split into two. Equity debit 76, liability debit 924, and cash credit 1000. issue cost part for equity, part for liability based on its fair value. Proportionate fair value. Proportionately, understand? So it is already done. Then you can go ahead. How to account for first three years? We will look at the, this thing, account is there, liability. Beginning, now I have updated only the liability one, now beginning double entry balance me, 92.4, liability credit, equity credit here, 7.6, come on now. and debit to your cash debit, issue cost, Maybe in 0.9 uh, here debit issue cost, here equity account debit issue cost, cash credit, and a thousand of them. At the end of the each year, what we have to do? How much you pay interest? Me, you pay interest six, six k one one million six million na me million only other thing gaane six million. Then cash credit here debit six. What is your finance cost? And the finance cost then here the gun. It is at 9.38. I then issue cost the all thing make it. In a gun don't I 9.38 percent value. You are kidding me. 92.4 into 9.38. Without any around. Yeah, 8.6 again, right? So now decimal again is I made an account. 8 gana can 8.5 8.6. 8.6. 8.6. Yeah, that much anyway. Then add it profit and loss account debit as finance cost on this liability and here credit. At the bottom of the gun, it's a higher name again interest cost. A killer PNL given interest in a gun. Effective interest rate in gun. So 8.5 the my gun PNL. Right? So then you can find the closing balance. It will be the broad forward for the next year. This is second year now. Broad forward, do the same. Then you pay cash 6 million again in year 2, and your interest will be 94. That the, based on the beginning outstanding balance, you have to charge 9.38%. So it is 88. Oh, sorry, 8.8 should be. 8.8 gun okay. So then uh, you take the broad forward balance again for the next year, do the same. Finally, you will have balance of how much here? 100 in our hand. Effective interest rate, how do you have to excel? 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 How do you have to Understand? How do you have to excel? How do you have to You convert it into equity shares make a given name image to gun name 
So then here the bit, we have to carry it. Look the double end here. Maybe liability account debit, liability account debit 100. Equity account, equity account balance account ki the enemy. 7000 something after subtracting that uh, issue cost. Then 7518 equity credit and share capital credit. Share capital return here 107,518. What is that? That's the way of accounting in other countries, right? Because if you look this, this is from uh, actually, I think this is from ACCA question, right? If you look the answer, it is from my answer, something else. So that's why I took it. Then you can compare. Because in our country, we don't recognize something called share premium. Gunnan. So therefore, in our practice, we don't account like that. So then you have to understand why it is so. In our country, we have to write double end like this. This is we call other components of equity. Other component of equity. Understand? Hope that is enough. There are areas to be discussed. Next area. What do you think? Do we need to discuss Hekin and others? Go, oh, we can do one more hour now. Okay, let, now let's have five minutes break and come quickly. Right now, let's see a kind of brief thing on uh, financial instruments and hygiene. Actually now uh, in Hejin, uh, what we can see now, in, this is kind of very famous story in our country. Hope you can remember a lot of uh, things happened uh, under previous government, right? So there are some court cases also relating to this Hejin transactions. But uh, I don't want to discuss everything about Hejin uh, because already we have discussed about financial instruments up to certain level. But just to understand few things, there are basically two types of hedges. One is fair value hedges and another one is cash flow hedges. I will take only one. Uh, example to explain you uh, what's happening in hedging and how to account for these, right? I'm not going to teach you the pure fair value and cash flow hedges. Look this example very simply, uh, how to account for this. On 30th November 20X1, the directors of an entity is a, decide to enter into forward foreign exchange contract to buy 1 million uh, Swiss franc, actually this is kind of cash flow hedge. What is fair value hedge? Let's say now, uh, if I need, I can get into an agreement with a foreign company to buy, let's say, 1 million crude oil barrels on a certain rate. Let's say now around dollar will be around 145, 146 now. Let's say at 147. 147, uh, 1 rupee for 147 dollar. Sorry. 147 dollars, rupees for 1 dollar. That exchange rate. Right? So let's assume now I am going to get into an agreement to buy 500, 1 million crude oil barrels from let's say USA on January 1st of the next year at the rate of 1 is to 147. It means 1 dollar will be equal to 147 rupees. What's the benefit I have? If currency is further increase, let's say if it goes to uh, 149, I'll get kind of advantage, Why? Right? Already I have hedge, for, we call it fair value hedge. For the crude oil, how much? At the rate of 147. But if the rate comes down, I will have a big loss. So that's kind of hedge we can do. It's kind of fair value hedge. The another one cash flow hedge, look here what we do. I am going to buy 1 million Swiss, Swiss francs on, uh, now we are on this day, look here. On 30th November 20X1, but the date will be 31st March 20X2, I am going to buy currencies. It's kind of hedging again, right? we call it cash flow hedge. There is promise to purchase which at the time it is taken out as a, zero, a cost of zero, no, no, no operational cost, right. So then uh, 
this contract fulfills three requirements to be classified as derivatives if you can remember derivatives we can we learn last last day coming on financial instruments so there should be three characteristics look in that particular agreement we have these characteristics what are those its value change as response to foreign exchange rate value will be changed if the foreign exchange rate go up or go down right also no initial investment no investment what's it only kind of agreement we have only kind of agreement but it has kind of value it has kind of income or maybe some type expense we don't know also look settlement will happen in a future date in this example it is on 31st march 20x2 now we are in 20x1 november 30th understand so all these all these three characteristics are satisfied therefore we can recognize this as part of derivatives understand hedging uh, and hedging classification it comes under fair value sorry cash flow hedge you are going to hedge for hedge can a kind of forecast it's like in our case it's like gambling i can remember now at that time uh, the something happened in our country i was in a conference in philippines so there are professors said at that time the oil prices went up in the market that there are professors in philippines they delivered some lectures for us they said definitely oil prices will come down in the future therefore we should not go for hedge to high, high rates even though at that point i think it's in 2009 somewhere there 908 right that period where oil prices went up mar vidhi value na but they said no even though it is so now sure within next year it will come down it happened abhi mukada kare value vidhi vh ab hedge kare ek value vidhi na byte it was mukada ne in the market it came down and the 35 ko gaand idhar baisa ne dollar price me टू डॉल बारे पाइस थर्टी फाइव डॉलर सर इतने पैसा मुझे तो नहीं आप हेच कर हम पढ़ा रहे थे मंदिर ने हेच कर बिग लॉस आप गेवन डो ना गान हेच कर लाती है सो दैट्स अ लॉस दे है एक नार पेट्रोलियम के स्टोर के दे हैव हेच दे इज बिग लॉस इन मंदिर ने मुझे दिलाती नाउ बट दे इज काइंड ऑफ स्टोरी लाइक दैट बट हियर वट वी से हियर नॉट फेयर वैल्यू हेच हियर कैश लो हेच दे इज नो एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट ओनली काइंड ऑफ गेजिंग not actually guessing it's kind of strategy you have to analyze the market and predict the currency that's a talent you have now here what you do you promise to buy 1 million swiss francs on a certain date no investment initial investment nothing only kind of agreement between these two parties buyer and seller right how do you account for this look what it says 39 says derivatives are recorded at fair value now i am going to teach you little on this how to account for derivatives in financial state <clears throat> look more information we need to have now basic information you have to remember we are going to buy 1 million swiss franc on a future certain date let's assume now my year end is 31st december of each year now i am going to hedge this on according to the facts if you can remember november 30th my year end will be december 31st settlement date will be next year march 30th the 31st now look the balance sheet date 31st december the exchange rate specified in the forward contract is ah uh, when you get into a contract on november 30th the rate is 0.23 for 1 rupees it means Swiss franc 0.2341 rupees. Right, these are not actual currency value, ba? Huh? These are hypothetical values. Remember. Therefore, by March 31st, according to the agreement, agreement signed on when? 30th November. Year end is 31st December. Settlement date is 30th March next year. Understand? when you get into the agreement this is the rate you have you agreed you agreed to buy 1 million swiss franc at the rate of 0.3 is to 1 understand therefore according to this agreement how much you have to pay on this date according to the agreement this much 1 million swiss franc the rate uh, we have to pay in rupees then bigger than that no then 1 million divided by 0.3 it will be you have to pay around 4 4 million 300000 something 347000 it is expected value this is a story 
go ahead. At 31st December, the fair value of the derivative could be more or less than the figure. Yes, it's true. Why? Currency has been changed. Sure, right? On this agreement date, it was around this much. But sure, by 31st December, there may be a small deviation. We got the then said we will have to record loss or loss on the derivative, but if it is more, there will be a gain. Yes, it is true. If the currency rate is appreciated, what happens? There will be a gain. If it is depreciated, there will be a loss. Right? Let us see now. We will examine both possibilities. Now we have again. Now we are at the end of the year, 31st December. What is our currency rate now? 0.24 is to 1. Now accordingly, according to the balance sheet date figures, how much you will have to pay? Look, same picture again. How much you will have to pay? 4,166,000. But originally we estimated how much? 4,347,000 4, 4, on the estimate date. Look this up. But since the currency, look here, currency has been appreciated or depreciated. Our currency, now we need to have 0 0.2441 rupee. Uh, rupee value is not It means our currency appreciated, their currency depreciated. You have to think on that, huh? economics. Right? There is again on the settlement date. No initial investment, nothing, only a paper, agreement. On the agreement, we have gain of how much? Now we recognize it as part of liability. That's the point I need to show you finally. That exchange rate gain or loss, not exchange rate gain or loss, it's derivative gain or loss, should be recognized into profit and loss account. And under fair value, sorry, in cash flow H, there's any fair value difference of the cash flow H, it should be accounted to profit or loss. You are going to point it. Now, how do you take it? Look, income statement, debit, derivative liability will be credited. Right? I'm go forward again. What happens? In, if the exchange rate is other way around, now it's 0.21. I think it's our currency rate is appreciated. How many monkey you have made? You No, no, other way around, right? Islam, where did you go? Right? Other way around. In the previous story, what has happened now? 0.024, again, our currency has depreciated. Islam, given down to 0.23, then I'll be 0.24 given down, Swiss franc given. Gun. Are they? Don't take a anipatrilati. Q anipatrilati. That's why we got a loss. Yeah, look. Are they? Are they? Now, Q is a little anipat. Double entry. So then there is a loss. I pay currency a pallet and again, other than a value, you know, then dollar rate value again, I pay currency, I do know, depreciate, depreciate, you know, again. Then we have to pay 0.24. Again, I pay currency, depreciate, the other currency, appreciate, well. Are they? I'm selling you any petty. Right now, uh, you can hurry. Make any petty, no, no. Because then, I thought, I mean, we will recognize it as part of derivative asset. Then we have to pay currency. We still have agreement to Ghana. We expected to buy 0.23. Again, a rupee like 0.23. Then we agree. But now it has been decreased. Then a rupee like 0.21. It has been decreased. Then a rupee like 0.21. 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 4 million, 4.3 million originally, agreement date taking. Right? These are two independent scenarios, huh? first and second. So then uh, there is gain here. The may take a cut to run, you settlement date ticket. The may debate them anyway. How do you know Makadin? Where do you know Makadin? Currency. Assume that actual rate, actual rate on the settlement date, cover the March 31st. 0.235 is to 1. 
आप ओरिजिनली प्लान करे कि बैलेंस डेट वी हैड रेट ऑफ की तरफ की विसला पॉइंट टू वन ओ जैसे हम टू सिनारियोस पॉइंट टू वन ओ पॉइंट टू फोर उन्हें का पेन पुलांग किया लगी बेस ऑन दैट वी विल हैव गेन नो लॉस देन फाइनली व्हेन यू सेटल इट इट्स पॉइंट टू थ्री फाइव स्मॉल डिफरेंस राइट नाउ हाउ डू अकाउंट फॉर दिस एस्यूम दैट एक्चुअल रेट इज नाउ Accordingly, how much you have to pay? You have to pay 4.255 million. Plan A is the biggest given, 4.347 million. At the moment, the given when it is 4.255 million. The director's actions have resulted in is that include uh, incurring an overall loss by taking out the contract of in a total loss of here. Nine two thousand five hundred seven. Aiy loss ka kuni. Ab yagri unhe kiya the point two three. Abai rate ka value na kiya the point two three five na. Now we have loss of nine two thousand five hundred seven. This is the overall loss on the derivative liability. But how to account for this thing on this date? Assume that the exchange rate. Was 0.24 on the balance sheet date. So you can remember 0.24 ki isella scenario ki. Abhi gata scenario us dega on the balance sheet uh, on the balance sheet date. 0.24 scenario and 0.21 scenario dega gata. If it is 0.24, we recognize we can remember. Maka dega tiya liability, profit and loss account debit, liability account credit. We pass an entry. Then after the total overall loss ekir. Overall loss should be 92,507. इन आप वैडी पूरा लॉस का रिकग्नाइज कर ली बाकी याद दिस मच 82 88638 इट शुड बी रिवर्स टू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस का आई वैडी पूरा रिकग्नाइज कर ली मान लॉस का अभी सेटलमेंट डेट के इधर समा इट्स लाइक ओवर प्रोविजन अंडर प्रोविजन यार अभी से लग रहा है एकमाई सो देन दैट वन शुड बी रिवर्स टू प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस का इन द सेकंड सिनेरियो ऑन एक तो हमें दिए सेम थिंग राइट और 88 गाना रिवर्स करा मैं गेन Income statement will be. Then this one, right? The second part. You can see the double entry that I have written here. Eighty-eight thousand six hundred. We have reverse debit to liability account and credit to profit and loss account. And the balance. May I go and get the account number? Antimal settlement date. Get that was monthly. Be account number. Settlement date. It is. You have to pay it by cash. You can, you can, it is cash selling given loan. This one, 4.25 because we agreed that the rate, currency rate will be 0.24. Well, you let it. Yes, yes. 0.24. So what we did finally at the balance sheet date, we had to convert these currencies at its fair value on the reporting date currency. If there is any difference, to be charged to yeah, profit and loss account. The currency will be in a difference. You have to charge. At the settlement date, again remeasure, and the difference should be charged to profit and loss account, and balance should be settled by cash. So very simple thing, right? And the other part is about uh, cash flow H and uh, fair value H. I don't think that we don't we need to discuss all these. So therefore, I'm not going to discuss cash flow H and fair value H. We spent I think more than two days now, almost two days. We need you just read this thing and understand. Those are there, but practice also very rare. So therefore, no point of doing all these. Uh, we will do some revision questions relating to uh, this one within last two weeks again, right? Then uh, you have to read it at least two, three times and try to understand it. I need to start little on uh, IFRICs today, so that's why I wanted to have at least 20-15 minutes. So then next week we can start district number one.
right so any clarification you need from this financial instruments little complicated you have to read it twice at least three four times then you can understand little you look at uh, the other part of this right now right uh, this is kind of technical stuff right so then anitya what is the technical thamai but uh, financial instruments now we are going to learn something about ifr ics international financial reporting interpretation committee guidance so hope you have learned already what is ias and ifrss and we have discussed few iss and ifrss this semester we need to discuss leasing now we didn't discuss no all good so then uh, remind me yeah because it is not in the syllabus i have not included in the syllabus it is important so therefore we'll discuss it at least uh, in your personal financing which leasing company should be selected it's also important different different offers are there at least when you are going to finance your own asset they give you package no how do you evaluate it like i told you previously different different rates they say with different different finance cost look the way that we took finance cost today they say it's only 14.5% when it comes to your hand it is not that you have some other cost you have to incorporate everything and find what is most profitable one in your hand so it is your cost of capital not the company's cost of that's what they say actually 14% 5 or the whatever the percentage offered by the leasing company is that their own rate their cost of capital plus the margin it is not your cost of capital then you have to so look what is your cost of capital related to this agreement you have to incur some other cost no? they say okay now we will charge 14.5 as interest plus some other documentation charges then some different different cash flows here and there they change the timing of the cash flows then you have time value of money so you have to consider those right anyway now uh, we will come back to this uh, kind of different uh, area again we will learn at least 5 6 ifr ics in our syllabus which uh, which are important in practice so actually now we need to understand in leasing there is one if recall ifr ic number 4 they actually we need to learn some, there are some agreements where we can't see whether there is particular lease agreement or not complex agreements let's say if there are some uh, group companies what we do sometime i i buy an asset as a parent what i do on a lease terms and i am going for a, uh, giving it for another subsidiary to use it and i charge kind of rental from that particular uh, the company sometime maintenance are done by me usually in leasing maintenance are done by the lessee you know? in this lease i i took it under finance lease given to subsidiary to use it then maintenance is done by me but i charge something from subsidiary what is it is it a lease in between these two parties not sure whether we can say whether it is lease or something else so therefore there is if recall ifr ic number 4 as i remember number number 4 whether agreement contain a lease that means if any lease agreement is there sometimes there is no hard and fast rule to see whether it is lease or not then they will explain it here we will take uh, the first ifric probably we can discuss next week so i need to start it uh, with the ifric number 1 that's why i need to give kind of brief introduction i need to have only 15 minutes for this so then we can complete this and uh, fresh uh, thing we can start next week with ifric number 1 so here actually ifr is what they try to do they need to give kind of guidance for gray areas or unclear areas in ifrss and iss right very simple example if you can remember in uh, very simple uh, like say, let's say now in your say in your stories you say what is called uh, electricity meters and all let's say if you are going to construct a transformer i told you once i think this story 
you are going to construct a transformer close to your what is called uh, you you told the story transformer story you are the one yes yes right transformer in uh, what was the story you spend money you spend money to get electricity for the uh, to your university university to the university no university okay the institute ah, yes yes not university right to your institute and you paid money but the transformer belongs to the electricity board then in your hand is it an expense or asset you can't recognize it as an expense sorry you can't recognize it as an asset it's an expense but to the electricity board what happened can they recognize as an asset but usually what happens when we buy an asset we pay cash and get an asset if the electricity board side if you look at what they what it happens to them they get cash and they get an asset it's unusual no? usually what happens we give cash and get an asset in their hand what happens they get cash and get an asset both in flows those are unusual things then how to account for those kind of special scenarios no instructions no there is a trick for this right so those are the areas look those are not in standards but take another one like when you buy goods from uh, what is called these supermarkets they have bonus point scheme different different bonus points are given so when i buy 1000 worth of goods they will give me i don't know 10 oh one bonus point one thousand one bonus point for abhi demo kills pa na nexus na ego lagi din nexus din kills ne aap hi ko mangate aap hi ko loyalty mang kar din on card de yes loyalty card ar din mana the food city mana din ego lagi din on card de i don't know everybody has now that kind of bonus point scheme so abhi dena 100 rupees spend karo one bonus point Even then, thousand rupees spend crore, one bonus point, something like that. We can redeem bonus points and we can buy goods and services. Anyone? In our hand, actually, it's kind of benefit. We don't want to learn how to account for bonus points that we spend. But in their hand, what is it? When they give bonus points for us, in their hand, there is a liability. Hey, if I redeem it to them, they are liable to give me goods and services. Is there any standard to cover like that? there is no standard therefore we have one ifric call customer loyalty program accounting for customer loyalty program ifric number 13 so hita ganna pula monada me karanne yanne kiyala there are different different now actually it is the core area in the syllabus we are talking about financial reporting issues now when we are reporting on those kind of things we don't have specific guidance in iiss or ifrss they are what we try to do now we are going to search some solutions for these kind of ones. understand I take another example like this. Let's say there are some companies they pay dividends not by cash. Instead of cash, they give goods and services. Let's say simple example. If I am running a retail network, when I pay dividends to my shareholders, what I can say? I don't have cash to pay dividends this time. I will give you a gift voucher. Let's say dividend. Now you have thousand shares. I am going to give you five thousand dividends, five rupee per share. Then five rupee. Dividends per one share, then it will be thousand. If you have thousand shares, you can have five thousand gift voucher. Then what you can do? I will give you a gift voucher to buy services from my retail outlet. In your hand, any matter doesn't matter. Why? You have the value. No? I'll pay you dividends five thousand. Instead of that, I'll give you a gift voucher. Then you buy goods and services from my retail outlet. In my hand, I have benefit. Why? What is it? If you buy goods and services again from me, my real dividend is not. Five thousand. What's it? Less than that. Why there is a profit margin when you buy goods and services from my entity? Understand? Sometimes for the gift voucher, I can give you a di discount also. You buy goods and services for the uh, gift voucher, company will give you a discount. Anyway, all these are non-cash distribution to owners. No specific standard to discuss on this. Therefore, there is a trick here. Seventeen, as I remember. non cash accounting for non cash distributions to owners can dividend given cash only me when i again it's all about the better karan those are there then those are the eight now those are some examples that we are going to discuss within next couple of weeks so then we will learn how to account for these kind of special scenarios instructions are given by international financial reporting interpretation committee guidance 
Understand? But this is kind of uh, committee which is coming under IASB. Make it clear. Now, what you are going to do? Let explain. Because there is no need. Make a committee. Can I remedy? But remember, remember IFRIC is part of what is called I. IFRSS, IFRS is a part of IFRIC, right? So there are some other uh, classification and clarifications. You read it later. Look here. Look this part. Once the IASB has given the approval for this IFPRIC, it will become part of IFRS. But only thing remember, in IFRIC, we are not going to set new rules and regulations. It is not so. We are going to merge several rules and regulations given by different, different standards. And recommend some practice within the IAS and IFRS. Understand, as a result of IFRICs, we are not going to lay down new rules and regulations. It's not what we do, pick here and there a lot of rules given by different IFRSs and IASs and for through IFRICs. Understand? So that's why we say IFRICs become part of IFR, uh, IFRSs. Got it? So then uh, with, uh, with examples you can understand what we are trying to do with IFRICs. Very simply we are trying to clarify, clarify interpretations, clarify some grey areas or we can say niche areas in our IFRSs and IASs. That's what we are trying to do under IFRICs. There is another thing called EITF, Urgent Issue Task Force. You can read those instructions later but it is not that much practicable now. So mostly uh, all guidance are coming through IFRICs. Look at this point. I told this. IFRIC is not charged with creating rules. Actually, what they do, they explain the stories behind niche areas, so unclear areas in IFRS and IASs. Understood? To take one IFRIC, actually, now we will learn probably uh, next week, uh, IFRIC number one. It is about decommissioning charges or demolition charges. Part of that already I have discussed with IA16, if you can remember. I told you if you, you are going to demolish an asset after its useful lifetime, you have to spend some money, right, at the end of the useful lifetime. What is the accountant treatment already we have learned? Present value of this should be recognized as part of initial cost of the asset. That guidance came from IA 16. Understand? Present value of future de decommissioning charges should be recognized as initial cost of the asset. That is how we have learned. Then if it is changed during the period, if that estimate is changed, after certain number of years, what we have to do? No guidance. Therefore, we have something called IFRIC number one. Understand? Now, it is not a new one. IA 16 partly discuss it, but guidance is not sufficient. So, therefore, there is new one called IFRIC number one. Understand? I told this again. There are members there, voluntary uh, service members, then they uh, work as a committee. You can read those. What they do? If there is any, any issue, they consider it and they will uh, put into the IFRIC agenda and they will discuss it. So then they will form a document. That document will be presented to the IASB. Once the IASB approval is given, it will become part of IFRS. That is due process. Even is Aman, okay, very. IASB will give the 
formal body who uh, approve this document. These are examples. Look. We will do some uh, practical or important things for our environment in our country. There are some other items. No point of doing all these. Look, customer loyalty program, I told you. Then I, I, those are the examples I told you. First one we will do next day. Next day. Where the agreement contain a lease. There are some instructions to decide whether there is a lease part in big agreement. Look who agreements the some are different different conditions. Inside that there may be some kind of lease part. Right? So there I will discuss leasing. So leasing karla ek karana hari. Itna karan bola abhi lease make karna milaot. Ek karan kali lease ek karla karana hari. And man karan dikha o idega karna ho tani. Construction of real estate. This is very important in our market now. Right? So therefore, uh, you can discuss this thing. Probably sometime, let's say, you can see, see some advertisement appearing on the television. But they say, Obage idame manada. Dino ni? Idamati yano nang api gaya hadala dino. Kena khatav. Obage obage idamati yano nang api gaya khatala dino. That kind of advertisement is gaya no? What is it? Is it sale of good? Or any service. If I have my own land as constructor, what they can do? You come and construct a house for me. Let's say if I am doing a construction business and if you have a land, what I can do? On your land, I will construct a house for you based on your design or based on my design. Materials will be sometimes provided by you or sometimes it will be provided by me. Sometimes I will propose what is called uh, the design, but you can do modification. In my hand, is it sale of goods or providing a service? Complicated. Not clear. Really. Some other maintenance are done by me or sometimes by your, your, your side or separate company. Oh, sometimes it's my land, my materials, my design. You have to pay installment price for the building. Apartments are the name. So then we will discuss those. Those are we don't have any specific standard on those. So therefore we have to guide on this. Distribution of non-cash to owners. I told it. Dividends given on a When a form selling. If I if I let's say if I am running a car manufacturing company, instead of dividends, what I can do? I can give a car. Bulun? They don't want to try him. Dividends and what they need a car. They can dividends value bigger. Car car car. Even that one, a car value bigger. That one, our market dealer, that one, our body body vehicles. Even that one. Who do want to do? This is question. So then, how to account for that kind of one? Look, the other one. Transfer of asset from customers. And even that one, our key is the electricity. That electricity board is storing. Transfer of asset from them. Transfer of asset from customers. So customer can transfer the asset to the company. That kind of one. One, two, three. Let's say one is the same. One, two, three. Four, five, six. We will do six. That is how we do it. Scope is not that much big. Scope is small. What is the incident? We are going to do it. We are going to do it. We are going to do it. Only sometimes two, three double entries. Only a few small area. Then customer loyalty program also not big ones. We are going to do it. We are going to do it. Within next three days. Probably I will complete this part. That's what I will do. The first thing, maximum three and a half days, you will spend on this. I will tell you that 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 I will tell you that. It's close to level. Then thereafter we have another part. First in a week, then eight weeks gone. Thereafter we have at least work for five weeks continuously. For what? Group financial statements, group accounts. There are main three aspects in this syllabus. Assignments already given, na? Course outline ke atadhi na assignment ke. Balan online test will be there later. There are main three parts. One, if trick part, already we have completed. No, sorry, we are going to start. Other part, employee benefits, IFRS two, financial instruments, and some qualitative aspects. Abhi thoro podi alu thing ab IFRS se dekha thora kara. 
කරන්න මතක් අපි පියක් ඉස්සරහට. ඒකට කන්සොලිඩේෂන් වලට දාලා IFRS අනම මම කොබ්ලික් අලුතෙන් කරමු. IFRS අලුතෙන් අපිට එක කතා කරනවා. IAS අලුතෙන් එන්නේ නැහැ. I told you, right? Last IAS came in 2001 නේ. ඊට පස්සේ IAS නැහැ, right? ඒකට IFRS ටික අලුතෙන් අපිට ටික ලංකාවට අපිට කතා කරනවා. And there are some qualitative aspects to be done, like creative accounting, human resource accounting. I think I did. There are some qualitative aspects in accounting. Then uh, we will do integrated reporting, uh, forensic accounting, creative accounting, social responsibility accounting, fair value, qualitative aspect. Ekara tapi sathi thuna. Idhar tiya ganne bolwa. Those are the main areas. Those are the areas ki hi pya cover karna mega thule. Kuro maapite okko maapite karna, but uh, we will do at least basics of group accounts. ifrics new ifrs iss and qualitative concepts in accounting oya pati thamai api katha karanne me syllabus ekak right then next week i start with uh, ifric number 1 and i can do another one dekak karanne puluwa api right we'll see